Hello everyone, this is Keith from the Solo Gamers Club and welcome to the channel. Tonight we're going to be continuing with episode 2 of our playthrough of A Touch of Evil 10 year anniversary edition versus the werewolf. During the initial stages of the investigators efforts they did fairly well. They were managed to acquire quite a bit of investigation tokens and they kept the wounds to a minimum. So we'll continue on. Our lead investigator will be Liliana, and she's currently at the manor. And we'll have Liliana make a roll for move. She rolls a three, and that's modified to a four with her horse. So we will give her four movement points. Her options would be to stay on the Shadowbrook board, or she can spend all of her movement points and spend a investigation token and move to the monastery. Those would be the options. Currently, she has one card from the manor and a horse. So that's the extent of her carrying capacity so far. And we have to decide what we want to do. And I think Liliana is going to spend an investigation and she's going to utilize the secret passage that will take her directly to the monastery on the Echo Lake board. So Liliana has used the secret passage and she has arrived at the monastery. And I think she's going to encounter the space, so we'll be drawing a monastery card. And she draws the card, Brother Darius, ally male holy. It's going to give her an extra wound box or health box and plus one to spirit, which is very good because Liliana is spirited and she always uses spirit in a fight. That is outstanding. So we're going to add Brother Darius to her tableau. And um, the flavor text on his card reads, Come with me. I can show you the way. All right, that is great. And that's going to end Liliana's turn. We're not going to do anything else with her. So we'll move on to Lucy Hanbrook, and she is also at the manor. Lucy has a total of 15 investigation tokens. She's also picked up a very valuable book of medicine from the manor and a party invitation which allows her to carry an additional card from either the manor or windmill. So I think what we're going to do is we'll see what Lucy's movement is and her choices would be to go to the blacksmith shop and spend some of that investigation on some equipment or maybe to travel to the windmill. We'll see what happens. And here's Lucy's movement roll. She rolls a three, so she's got three movement points. All right. And I think we're going to have Lucy move to the church. One, two, and three. So she reaches the church, and she's going to encounter the space there. The first step is to draw an event card at the church. She draws the event, Honorable Gesture, Event Honor. Give any hero or town elder plus two honor for the rest of the turn or showdown fight round. Or prevent any number of wounds that another hero is about to take. Gain two investigation for each wound prevented in this way. That is a great card. And now, since Lucy is at the church, we're going to have her attempt to train spirit. She can pay two investigation and make an honor five plus test. And if she can pass that, she's going to gain a plus one spirit token. So we'll do that. That'll move Lucy down to a total of 13 investigation tokens. And her honor is currently at four. So she'll be rolling four dice for this test. Here's the roll. And she's done it. She's passed it. She's got a six and a five. That's going to award her a plus one to spirit. That'll raise her spirit up to four. So we'll give Lucy the plus one spirit token. And I think that's all she's going to accomplish for right now. We'll move on now to Heinrich Cartwright. Heinrich ended up finding the Pendant of Protection, which is going to make him immune to the werewolf's Curse of the Werewolf ability. He's got a total of 11 investigation, one wound, and he did take the Devil's Mark. So that's going to reduce his cunning by one. We'll see what he's going to do. There's quite a few investigation tokens on the Echo Lake board, so we'll see if he can maybe take advantage of those. This is Heinrich's roll for movement. And he rolls a six. That gives him six movement points. All right, let's see what Heinrich is going to do. 
And I think Heinrich is going to make his way to the south dock. So he'll move one, two into the bog, picking up that extra investigation. Three, four, and five to the south dock. And he'll automatically be able to pick up what's there. So he's gained a total of three investigation, moving him up to a massive total of 14. All right, now he's at the south dock. All right, he's going to encounter the space. Now, this is a dangerous location, so he has to roll a d6, and if he can get a 3 or greater, he'll be able to draw an event. On a 1 or 2, he's going to have to resolve a mystery card. Here's the roll. And he rolls a 4, so we're going to be drawing mystery card or um, event cards. He has the special ability Resourceful. He'll be able to draw two cards and keep the one he wants. And he's drawn the cards Strength of Will and Betrayal. Strength of Will is play immediately, play this card on a hero, gain plus one cunning. Or the Betrayal card. Play at any time except during a fight to choose an ally with a hero and roll a d6 on a roll of three plus. The chosen ally immediately steals one item from the hero. Well, we wouldn't want to use that. Or play if there is at least one evil elder alive and add a resolve token to any two town elders. Well, I think we're going to take the Strength of Will. That will help Heinrich because he has a very low cunning. So we'll take that card and discard the other. And I think before Heinrich ends his turn, he is going to spend three investigation. And he's going to heal the wound that he has. I should have done that before I even encountered the space. Um, because that, you know, there could have been some type of a um, battle or something and he would have been down a wound already so we're going to spend that three investigation heal the wound and that's going to end Heinrich's turn and we'll move on to Eliza the witch hunter she is at the windmill Eliza has a total of three investigation and she's picked up a horse and charmed relic and she has strength of courage plus one to honor we'll have her make her movement roll and she rolls a five and that's modified to a six because of the horse. So she's got six movement points. And I think she's gonna head back to the manor. So we'll have her move one, two, three, four, back to the manor. Eliza's gonna encounter the space and we'll draw a manor card for her. And she draws the card Secret Passage Investigation, moving an old book on the shelf. A creaky door opens to reveal a dusty passage. The faint sound of violin and the aroma of sulfur beckons you inside. Make a cunning four plus test and gain one investigation for every four plus rolled. If successful, also immediately move to and encounter any other name space on the board. All right, that is fantastic. All right, Eliza has a cunning value of three, so we'll see if she can pass this. And she's got Two successes, she rolled a four and a five. So that is gonna award her two investigation and she can immediately move to any namespace on the board. That is outstanding. That moves her investigation level up to five and uh, we'll have to pick a spot here where she can go. And I've decided to have Eliza travel to the inn. And uh, she's gonna encounter the space there before encountering gain two investigation. So that'll bump her investigation up to a total of seven. And we'll draw an in card. She draws the card, impossible key, item, key, magic. Draw a random location for this key. While at that location, you may discard the key as an action to gain five investigation or discard the key anywhere to make an honor five plus test. If successful, gain plus one cunning marker. All right, that is great. We'll draw a layer card and see where that key is useful. And that is at the North Dock, which is pretty close by. So that is great. We'll give that card to Eliza. And that's gonna bring Eliza's turn to a close and we'll move on now to the mystery phase that is gonna be resolved by Liliana. And we'll begin with our roll on the cooperative mystery phase chart. Here's the roll. Result is a seven and that is Surge of Evil. Roll once on the villain's minion chart and work out the result. If it is a minion or the villain attacks, draw a random location for placement. All right. 
So we'll make a 1d6 roll on the werewolf's minion chart. The roll is a 6, and that's a werewolf attack. The villain attacks. The hero must resolve a single fight round with the villain. Instead of causing wounds, each hit done to the villain gains one investigation for the hero. This does not count as a showdown. If there are no heroes in the space, instead place two investigation there, and the shadow track moves one step closer to darkness. All right, we'll draw a layer card and find out where that is. And the werewolf appears at the manor. So we'll go to the manor and take care of business. So the werewolf appears at the manor. There's no heroes there, just a section of militia. So we're going to place two investigation tokens there. The werewolf is going to move back to his off-board location and we're going to unfortunately have to move the shadow track down one. So our shadow track moves down to 16 and the werewolf is going to gain a plus two wound marker so that's going to move his total health capacity up to 22 now. And now Liliana has to resolve a mystery card. And the mystery card is Rumors Run Rampant, Mystery Hysteria. If Sophie the Midwife is still alive, roll a d6. Every town elder with honor equal to or less than the number rolled gains a secret. All right, she is still alive. So, and the flavor text reads, little lies bring man's demise. Okay, we're gonna roll a die and we'll compare that with the honor of the town elders. Here's the roll. The roll is a five. So that means that every elder with an honor of five or less is going to gain a secret. That's going to be Lady Hanbrook, Reverend Harding, Dr. Manning, Sophie herself, Magistrate Croft, the widow Jessica, and Mayor Carver. So all of the elders, with the exception of Lord Hanbrook and the Harbor Master, have received an extra secret. That's going to place the Widow Jessica and Mayor Carver with three secrets each. And the rules dictate that when you have three or more unresolved or un, unresolved secrets, those have to be revealed. So we're going to take care of that right now. We'll begin with Mayor Carver's secrets. We're going to reveal these one at a time. And that sometimes can make a difference in which cards take precedence over other ones. Now, if any evil card comes up, Mayor Carver will be turned into an evil elder. So we'll start resolving these. The first one is a little secret, Voyeur. Sneaking around the town at night, this town elder peers through the windows of his neighbors, watching them from afar. Who knows what other devilish acts and depraved deeds they have committed while gallivanting through the wicked night. This is of no consequence to the investigation and no effect. Okay, we'll try the next one. And this one is Werewolf Scratch. Well, that sure is thematic. Secret Curse, reveal immediately. At the start of each mystery phase, place a transformation marker on the Elder. When there are markers here equal to or more than the Elder's honor, remove the markers and they become a Werewolf Elder. Once the Elder has become a Werewolf Elder, there is no need to place transformation markers here. At the start of each mystery phase, the first player must pass a spirit or cunning test or take a five fight dice attack from the Werewolf Elder. If KO'd, gain the curse of the Werewolf. This secret remains even if the Elder is evil, but may be discarded by anything that cancels a curse. Oh boy, that is not good. All right, here is his last card. And that one is a little secret witchcraft. In the dark of night, when the black candles burn, a hushed whisper chant is all that can be heard from this town elder's chamber door. This is of no consequence to the investigation and no effect. So, the only card that we're going to have to worry about is the werewolf scratch. So, at the start of each mystery phase, so the next, starting with the next turn, Mir Carver will begin with those transformation markers, and unfortunately his honor is only a one, so he is going to be transformed uh, very quickly. All right, we'll move on now to the Widow Jessica's secrets. And this is the first of the Widow Jessica's secrets. 
She has a little secret called a second life with a penchant for week-long excursions to the bustling city nearby, this town elder does not speak of what dark treasures their ill-gotten wealth can provide or what dark influences they have brought back with them. This is of no consequence to the investigation and no effect. Okay, so far so good. Here's the next one. We have a little secret war criminal. What this town elder did during the long war of independence is shameful to say the least. This is of no consequence to the investigation and no effect. Okay, one card to go. And this one is Secret Madness. Reveal immediately. Place the marker for this town elder on the board at a random location. At the start of each mystery phase, immediately move the elder to a new random location. If there is a hero there, draw a mystery card. If there is a minion there, the elder is killed. Otherwise, place two investigation in this space. If this secret is discarded or the town elder killed, remove their marker from the board. All right, well, that's what we have. So we'll draw a layer card and find out where the Widow Jessica is going. And she is going to be at the icy waters to start out with. So the Widow Jessica is in a boat in the icy waters. And that is going to bring this turn to a close. We'll move the first player marker from Liliana to Lucy Hanbrook and we'll continue on. So Lucy Hanbrook is our first hero for the turn. She has a total of 13 investigation. She picked up that uh, plus one to her spirit, which was great at the church. So we'll see what she's going to do. All right, Lucy is at the church. We'll have her roll for move. And she rolls a four. So she's got four movement points and we'll see what, where Lucy's going to head to next. Well, Lucy already has a card from the manor so uh, she wouldn't be able to keep any additional cards there but she does have the party invitation that allows her to keep an extra card from the manor or windmill so i think she'll head back to the manor one two three movement points that allow her to take the two investigation that are placed there moving her up to 15. and um, now she can either encounter the space or we could have her do an upgrade i think i will that the, she only has two health boxes and her upgrade would give her an additional one so we're going to have her pay 10 investigation she'll pay 10 investigation and she has to unfortunately discard uh, one of the event cards that we've gotten both of them are good ones so i think i will mm, i hate to do that we'll have to discard the i'll handle this card and uh, that will get her her upgrade and that's going to give her plus one to combat an extra health box and she can purchase items at the town hall for one less than normal so i think that is good and lucy's at the manor she's going to encounter the space now and we'll draw a card she draws the card debt of honor investigation debt with a heavy heart and a cold shiver you set out into the foggy night to make good on your word no more will die this night. Make an honor three plus test and gain two investigation for every three plus rolled. Keep this card. Anytime a town elder would be killed, you must take D3 wounds instead to prevent it. Discard this card if you are KO'd or if the shadow track crosses into a new stage. All right, well, she's gonna start by making her honor roll a three plus honor roll. Her current honor is four. So we will have her roll four dice and see how many successes she can get. I'll put that into frame. Okay, here's the roll. And she rolled a total of two successes. She has a six and a five. That's gonna earn her a total of four investigation. That's awesome. That moves her investigation up to nine and I think that's going to end her turn. Now, to help me keep track of this, I'm going to place a journal pages token next to Lucy's uh, model on the map, and I'll place the other journal pages token on that Dead of Honor card so that I remember that might draw me to that, um, to that card. It's kind of a unique card. That's going to bring Lucy's turn to a close. We'll move on to Heinrich Cartwright. 
and he's currently at the south dock. All right, Heinrich Cartwright is up next. He was able to uh, amass 11 investigation, and he did pick up a vent card that gives him plus one cunning, which kind of cancels out that devil's mark against his cunning value, which is good. Heinrich is at the south dock, so we'll have him make a roll for move. And he rolls a two, so he's got two movement points. And, um, well, we don't have enough to reach the north dock. So, I think what he'll do is he'll take a boat and go across to the Forgotten Island, and we'll see what he can find there. So Heinrich is going to encounter the space, we'll draw a Forgotten Island card. He draws the card Vengeful Totem, Danger Magic. Pulling aside the branches, you are faced with a hideous creation. Its dark eyes full of rage. You should not have come here. Make an Honor 6 plus test and gain 3 investigation for every 6 plus rolled. If failed, you are cursed. Take the Curse of the Werewolf card. Oh my goodness. Well, Heinrich has an honor value of four. So he'll be rolling four dice for this test, and it's a tough one. He needs to have sixes. Here is the roll. And he's failed. I have no way of getting a re-roll on that. I'll check my event cards. No. Well, we do have this card, Honorable Gesture. Give any hero or town elder plus two honor for the rest of the turn or showdown. So I think we'll use it. That'll get him two more dice to roll. And uh, we got at least a chance of preventing that. So let's give it a shot. Here's the roll. He did it. He's got a six. So he was able to prevent taking that werewolf um, scratch uh, and the curse of the werewolf. So that's great. We've at least mitigated that card. All right. And that'll bring Heinrich's turn to a close. We'll move on to Eliza. Eliza has nine investigation points, I believe. Is that right? Three. Seven. She has seven. All right. She did pick up that key, which can be used at the north dock, and that can get her, um, if she can discard this at that location, she'll gain five investigation. So I think we'll try to make her way over to the north dock if possible. Eliza is currently at the inn, and she has a horse that'll give her plus one to move. Here's her movement roll. She rolls a two, so that's going to be modified to a three. So she'll have three movement points for this turn. And we'll see where we're going to move her. I guess she'll make her way to the monastery. She'll move one, two, and three into the monastery. So she'll meet up with Liliana at the monastery. And uh, we'll have her encounter the space, and she'll draw a monastery card. She draws the card Light of Truth, Item holy. You gain plus one fight dice for every little secret on a town elder in your space. Maximum of three. She can discard it to prevent one wound to herself or another hero or town elder in her space. All right, so she can keep that card. And um, that's great. Now, this is a holy item, and um, it would be probably beneficial if we can get that to or I should say, get uh, Eliza her upgrade because uh, that says that she gains uh, plus one fight dice for every holy item. So that's a good one. We'll keep that. That is great. And I think that's going to bring Eliza's turn to a close. We'll move on to Liliana herself, and she's also at the monastery. We'll have Liliana make a roll for move, and she gets plus one for her horse. Roll is a three, and that's modified to a four. So she'll have four movement points. And we'll see what she wants to do. And I think Liliana is going to make her way back to the inn. So she'll move one, two, and three back to the inn. She does not have a card from the inn yet. So we'll have her encounter the space. And at the inn, uh, she is going to be able to gain two investigation or heal a wound. She'll take the investigation. That'll move her up to a total of four. Now she's going to draw an in card. 
consulting our Echo Lake and Coast map reference, we find out that the inn focuses on cunning allies and unique rooms to stay in. All right. She draws the card, the Rose Room, Investigation Room. The room has an overpowering scent of roses, yet there are no flowers to be found, only the cold echo of lost souls. Make a Spirit 5 plus test and gain two investigation for every 5 plus rolled. If failed, take a wound and make the test again until successful. All right, Liliana currently has a Spirit of 3 plus 1 for Brother Darius, so she'll be rolling four dice for the test. She's looking for at least one five to pass the test. Here's the roll. And she's got two successes, a six and a five. It's going to earn her four investigation. It's outstanding. That moves her up to a total of eight investigation. And I think that is going to complete her turn. And we'll move on now to the mystery phase. And Lucy Hanbrook will be resolving that she's currently at the manor. Now, as this is the start of the mystery phase, we have a couple of things we have to take care of. And the first one is the werewolf scratch on Mayor Carver. At the start of each mystery phase, place a transformation marker on the elder. When they have markers equal to or more than the elder's honor, remove the markers and they become a werewolf elder. And that's what's gonna happen to Mayor Carver. His honor is only a one. So we are going to give Mayor Carver Werewolf Hero card, and it says here on his Werewolf Scratch card that at the start of each mystery phase, the first player must pass a Spirit or Cunning 5 plus test or take five fight dice attack from the Werewolf Elder. If KO'd, they will gain the Curse of the Werewolf. Ooh. All right, so that means that the first player is Lucy Hanbrook, and she's going to have to conduct a Spirit or Cunning test. She'll choose Spirit. She has a total of four there, so she'll make the roll with four dice, and we'll see what happens. And here's the test. And she's passed that with flying colors, so the well, uh, werewolf elder did not attack her. That is great. Our next step is to find out what is going to happen with the secret madness of the widow jessica she's currently at the icy waters she's going to have to draw a random location and depending upon what is there will impact her and the game so we'll draw a layer card she is going to move to the marsh and the marsh is on the south part of the shadow brook board there's no one there so she'll appear at the marsh and we'll place two investigation tokens there. And that is gonna take care of those special actions that occur at the start of the mystery phase. And we'll move on now to the lead investigator's role on the cooperative mystery phase chart. And here's Lucy's role on the chart. She rolls a three and that's Cursed Village. Immediately draw and resolve one mystery card for each hero starting with the first player. This replaces the normal mystery card for the turn. Oh boy, that is not good. We'll start by drawing the card for the first player which is Lucy Hanbrook. And Lucy draws the card Murder. Mystery, death, the villain has struck again. Place three investigation on the board at a random location and move the shadow track one step closer to darkness. All right, let's find out where this is occurring and then we're gonna have to roll for the werewolf's children of the night ability. Okay, this is going to occur at the magistrate's office. All right. So we place three investigation at the magistrate's office and we'll make the roll for the children of the night. On a four through six, a feral kin will appear. Rolls a five, so a feral kin will also appear there. Not good. So now a feral kin is in the town of Shadowbrook. All right, we're gonna move on then and complete the mystery card draw for Heinrich Cartwright. Heinrich is on the Forgotten Island and will make the card draw. And he draws the card, Late Night Experiments, Mystery Death. If Dr. Manning is still alive, 
Roll a d6 for every ally and animal item currently in play, including unsold town items. On a roll of five or greater, remove it from the game. If he has been killed or joined the villain, move the shadow track two steps closer to darkness instead. All right, I'll make those rolls off camera and I'll tell you the results. Incidentally, I just remembered we have to move the shadow track down a step for the murder card. That's gonna move us down to 15. If this track ever gets to zero, the heroes will lose the game immediately. I've made the rolls for all of the allies and animals that are in play and any in the town items deck and the only casualty was Eliza's horse Euros and it looks like Dr. Manning was doing a little vivisection late at night and Euros got in the way so we'll lose that horse that's too bad but it could have been worse I guess. All right that will complete that card now we're going to take care of Eliza's mystery card. Eliza's mystery card is March of Darkness. Every minion on the board moves two spaces along the shortest path towards the town hall. If there are no minions on the board, roll once on the minion chart, re-rolling event results and placing that minion in two random spaces. Well, there are minions. So we'll take care of the minion on the coast board first. First one is a feral can. He's currently at the barracks and he'll move towards the town square and he enters the town square. Now, if we ever have to place another minion in that space, it's going to move the shadow track up. So we need to get rid of that feral kin. A similar thing will happen at the town hall. The feral kin from the magistrate's office will move to the town hall. And that's going to complete Eliza's mystery card. Now we'll move on to Liliana's. And Liliana draws the card, murder, mystery, death. The villain is struck again, place three investigation on the board at a random location and move the shadow track one step closer to darkness. The flavor text reads, the order of the crimson hand could be anyone. Their influence runs deep. Okay, let's find out where this will occur. And this will happen at the covered bridge. All right. So we'll place three investigation at the covered bridge and then we'll make the roll for the villains, Children of the Night. On a four or greater, another feral kin will appear. And that's what's gonna happen. Oh boy. So another feral kin appears and this was not a good turn for the investigators. That is gonna complete the round. We don't have to perform the draw mystery card phase because of that uh, cursed village result that we had from the advanced cooperative chart. So we'll move the first player marker from Lucy back to Heinrich Cartwright. And because of that murder card, we have to advance the shadow track up one. We're at 14 now. And it's quickly moving up. And we'll begin a new round and Heinrich Cartwright is our lead investigator. He'll make a roll for move. And he rolled a four. And Heinrich, I think, is going to make his way to the monastery. So he's going to move two movement points to cross that water path to the north dock. That'll get him an extra uh, investigation point. And then he'll use another point to enter the monastery with Eliza the Witch Hunter. And Heinrich is going to encounter the space, so we'll draw a monastery card. And he draws the card, the host, minion, demon. Four fight dice with two wounds. You may not escape. If KO'd by the host, you will automatically become possessed. If defeated, gain four investigation. Oh boy. And what's bad about this is if we don't defeat it, then another hero is in the space. That's Eliza. She will have to combat the thing. So we'll have to try to take this thing out. We cannot escape. It's going to be rolling four dice, and we're going to be rolling only two. And here's the first round of combat. Cartwright against the host. Cartwright does no hits and the host does one to him. Oh. So he is going to gain one wound. And he cannot escape, so he's going to have to just keep battling on. Here's the second round of combat. And he does no hits. The host does another one to him. Oh. He's down to two health boxes. Not good. 
And we'll do the third round of combat. And unfortunately, the host did two more to him and he did one to the host. So that is going to KO Heinrich Cartwright. He has a total of four wounds on him now. He gains the possessed condition. You gain the keyword demon. At the end of each mystery phase, move to a random location. If there is another hero there, you must engage in a single fight round against them. If more than one, choose which to fight. If they are KO'd, transfer the possessed to them. Curses may be cured at the doctor's office. All right, well, he is KO'd. And he'll remain at the monastery. If you're KO'd on this board, you stay. At, you go to the monastery. So Heinrich is KO'd, and he is now possessed. We'll mark him accordingly. And I was wrong about that, the host. That is not a token. So that is removed from play, and Eliza won't have to worry about combating him. Now, hein Heinrich Cartwright was KO'd, so we're going to have to roll a die, and he's going to have to lose that amount of investigation or allies or items. Here's the roll. He rolls a five, so he'll be losing five investigation, bringing him down to seven. It's unfortunate. And that's going to bring Heinrich's turn to a close. We'll move on to Eliza, and she's also at the monastery. Now she lost her horse, so she's only going to be able to roll a d6 for movement. And here's her roll. She rolls a 5, and I think she's going to make her way to the north dock. She'll pick up the investigation there, giving her a total of 8. And she's going to encounter or to take her actions now and she has the impossible key which is located at the north dock and that says uh, that if it's discard the key is discarded as an action she'll gain five investigation so we will award her five investigation points for that impossible key that is great and now she's going to have to encounter the space and She'll need to roll a d6, and on a result of three or greater, she can draw an event card. Otherwise, it's a mystery card. She rolls a six, so we'll give her a event card. She draws the event, Magistrate's Mandate, play immediately. Play this card on any hero. That hero may now carry one additional card from either the Old Woods or the Abandoned Keep. All right, well... I think we'll play that on Lucy Hanbrook. She's currently on the Shadowbrook board, and she might be able to make better use of that. So we'll give that to her. And that's going to complete Eliza's turn. We'll move on to Liliana. She's currently at the inn. Liliana picked up Brother Darius as an ally. She has her horse and a skeleton key that works at the doctor's office. Liliana will make her roll for move. And she rolls a four. That's going to be modified to five. And we'll see what she wants to do. So she has five movement points. Well, Liliana already has a card from the monastery, so I, that wouldn't benefit us too much to go there. So I think she'll use her movement points to travel to the south dock. She'll move one, two, three, four, and five to the south dock. So Liliana is going to encounter the South Dock, and we'll make the die roll there and see what happens. And she rolls a 1. She's going to have to resolve a mystery card. Oh, boy. And she draws the mystery card, Growing Power. Play this card on the villain. It's going to get plus 1 to combat, and it will remain in play. We have a chance on canceling it, but for the time being, the werewolf's combat ability is at 6. And I think Liliana is going to try something a little different. She's going to use her skeleton key, but for the or part of the event. It says, discard this key as an action to immediately move to and encounter any namespace on the board. She's going to move to the magistrate's office, and she can pick up the investigation that is there, and that will place her close to a few of those feral kin. So we'll do that. So she is at the magistrate's office. She's going to use a... Um, collect investigation action there and she'll take those 
And as well, she's going to encounter the space and we'll start by having her draw an event card. She draws the event, take cover. Event, play during a fight round to prevent all hits a hero would take on the D6 roll of three plus each. If played during a showdown, all heroes and town elders involved may use this ability for one showdown fight round. Okay, that's a good card. And that's going to complete her turn, and we'll move on now to Lucy Hanbrook. Lucy is currently at the manor. She has a total of nine investigation and some pretty decent cards. So we'll have her make a roll for movement and see where she's going to go. Her roll is a two. All right, I think what we're going to do is I'm gonna have Lucy spend one investigation and we're gonna move her to the monastery. So Lucy has moved through the secret passage to the monastery where the currently KO'd Heinrich is recovering. We'll have her encounter the space. And if things couldn't get any worse, the host reappears at the monastery and now he's attacking Lucy Hanbrook. He's got four fight dice with two wound capacity. She cannot escape, and if she's KO'd, she will become possessed. Oh my goodness. So here is the first round of combat. Lucy is going to be rolling a total of two combat dice. And she gains one for her upgrade, so she'll be rolling three. That is a little better. And here's the roll. Lucy has done one hit, and the host has done two to her. I've marked them accordingly, and I think before we finalize that, Lucy is going to play the card, Take Cover. That says, play during a fight round to prevent all hits a hero would take on a D6 roll of 3+. plus. So we'll try that, and we'll see if we can prevent the two hits that Lucy just took. Since this is kind of a critical fight for her, uh, she can't escape. So... We need a three plus. Here's the roll. And of course she rolled a two, so we wasted that card, unfortunately. And she's going to take two hits, uh, two wounds. She has one health box remaining. She needs to get another hit on the host in order to take him out. We have to continue. There's no option for her. So she will make her roll. And she was successful. She's got the hit that she needs, but unfortunately, so does the host. So he gains his hit and she gains hers. So the host was defeated, but she's going to become possessed uh, because she was KO'd by the host. She'll gain four investigation. So we'll award her with that. And unfortunately, she's KO'd. We'll have to make a roll for her to see how much investigation or items or allies she's going to lose because of that. Rolls a three, so she'll spend three investigation tokens. And unfortunately, she gains that possessed card. That is not good. She gains the keyword demon. At the end of each mystery phase, move to a random location. All right, now when you're KO'd, um, that doesn't apply, so they'll have to wait till they wake up for that to happen, but this is really starting to get pretty bad. So that's going to complete the hero's activations. We'll move on to the mystery phase, and we have to start out with, um, that'll be resolved by Heinrich Cartwright, but we have those other things that will occur at the start of the mystery phase. Now Heinrich is... KO'd, so he will not be doing that. It'll have to move on to the next person, which will be Eliza, the witch hunter. She's at the North Dock, so she'll be making the rolls for these things. To start out with, we have our werewolf elder, Mayor Carver, and um, that means that at the start of the phase, the first player, which is now 
Eliza is going to have to make a spirit or cunning five plus test and if she doesn't pass that she's going to be taking five fight dice worth of damage from the werewolf elder she has a spirit of three so i guess she'll try to use that and we'll have her make the roll three dice and she needs to get a five or greater here's the roll and she failed so she is going to take a total of five fight dice worth of damage not good and unfortunately if she's ko'd then we're going to oh, she'll gain the werewolf transformation card as well okay here is the roll five fight dice and one hit was scored all right so we'll apply one wound to Eliza. Uh. Next up, we have to determine what the Widow Jessica is going to do with her secret madness. We have to draw a layer card and see where she's going to move to. The Widow Jessica is going to make her way to the lighthouse. There's no one there. So the Widow Jessica makes her way to the lighthouse, and we're going to place two investigation in that location. That will cover all of the preliminary things for the mystery phase. Now we'll go on to the co-op mystery phase role. And the role will be made by the new first player and that's Eliza. Here is the role. We've rolled a four and that's lies and deceit. Roll a d6. Any town elder with honor equal to or less than the roll gains a secret. If any town elder has three or more unrevealed secrets, reveal them immediately. Oh boy. All right, here is the roll, and we'll be checking their honor. The roll is a two. That means that secrets will be issued to Lady Hanbrook, Dr. Manning, and Mayor Carver. And unfortunately, that means that Lady Hanbrook and Dr. Manning now have three secrets. Uh, Mayor Carver only has one now that is unrevealed, so he's okay. But we'll have to see what's happening with those two elders. We'll resolve those now. And we'll start by examining the secrets of Lady Hanbrook. Here's the first one. And unfortunately, it is not good. Servant to darkness, secret evil. Working in the shadows, the town elder has become seduced by the dark promise of power and riches. They are now an evil shell of their former selves, little more than a henchman of darkness. When revealed, the town elder flips to become a evil elder joining the villain. All right, well, that means that Lady Hanbrook now becomes the Lady of Darkness. All right member of the werewolf's clan now and we'll have to continue resolving these cards just to see if there's anything else there reluctant hero that one is a not an evil card and little secret guilty conscience so those cards will be discarded but she is a servant of darkness next up we'll resolve dr. Manning's secrets First one is darkest secret, secret evil. The elder is evil either in direct control of the villain or is the villain. When revealed, the town elder flips to become an evil elder joining the villain. Do not discard this secret. The villain gains an extra plus one combat and this evil elder may not be targeted during a fight. So Dr. Manning is now going to become the good doctor. All right, we will add him to the werewolf's collection of evil elders. The other cards in his secrets are a brilliant mind that will be discarded and hero of the people that will also be discarded. And now Eliza has to resolve a mystery card and it's revealed to be murder. Mystery death. The villain has struck again. Place three investigation on the board at a random location and move the shadow track one step closer to darkness. 
The flavor text reads, Don't any of you people understand? This is no accident. It's murder. And we'll draw a layer card, and the murder occurs this time at the fields. So we'll place two investigation, or is it three? Let me double check. Three investigation at the fields. And then we'll have to roll for the special ability of the werewolf, Children of the Night. So we'll make our roll for Children of the Night. Four or greater will be a feral kin. And it is. Things can't get much worse. So now a feral kin is at the fields, and that is going to complete the mystery phase. So the shadow track moves one more step down, down to 13 for that murder card. And all that's left now is to move the first player marker. Now in this case, we don't move it because Heinrich Cartwright was KO'd and that uh, first player marker passed to Eliza, so she will keep it for this coming turn as the first player. And that was not a very good turn for the heroes. We're in severe shape here. So I think I'm going to end the video here, and we will regroup for a third episode. In the meantime, thanks very much for joining me at the Solo Gamers Club, and I hope to see you again for the next episode. As always, have a nice evening. Good night.